You're listening to Simple Roots Radio, episode number 104, and today we're talking with an expert all about your senses and how you can use them to live a healthier life. Welcome to Simple Roots Radio with Alexa Sherm. Alexa believes that simplicity in life is the key to achieving true and lasting health. And now your host, Alexa Sherm. Welcome back to this podcast. My name's Alexa, and like always, this is a place to get healthy, live happy, and find more joy. Today, we're talking about a really interesting subject and one that I've been dabbling with and that I I share here and there, but I've really never put into a full picture and a full podcast like we are today. And today, we're talking specifically about the senses, that's touch, taste, sight, smell, and hearing, and how you can use that for your health. But before we get to today's show, I've been getting a ton of questions about the Simple Cleanse and us going through it together. Yes, there's a group of people who are going to go through the Simple Cleanse together starting September 10th. And I would love to have you join this group, this tribe of like-minded people who are on a mission to live healthier lives. Now, the Simple Cleanse is, yes, a quick detox, cleansing of the body, but it's not like you're typical detox cleanses. This is more of a place and a space to create the environment that your body needs to do the job that it was designed. So we're talking about mindset space, emotional space. We're talking about lifestyle and environmental space and changing your diet and your exercise routine to just live a healthier life. In this course, I try to teach you that it's not so much about your physical appearance, but how it makes you feel, like really getting in touch with your body and what it likes and what it doesn't, so you can create your own system to living your best life. So if you wanna learn more or you wanna join in, make sure you head over to simplerswellness.com to learn all about the Simple Cleanse. There's gonna be a ton of information coming out, some free classes to help you learn a little bit more and hopefully encourage you to join us again on September 10th. So stay tuned for that. And if you want any information and make sure you don't miss out on anything, make sure when you're over at the show notes, simplerswellness.com backslash 104, you sign up for my email list. This is the place to get all the insight and special deals just for you. So make sure you sign up there and check out the Simple Cleanse. I also have the five-day hormonal reset, which has been super popular lately, and really just countless testimonials coming out about how that changed so many people's lives. It is a good intro into the Simple Cleanse, so if you wanna do or get started right away, I would say join the Hormone Reset and just get started on your own. That's a self-guided course that is really easy to implement and easy to see big changes in just five days. So I would suggest you check that out. Again, you can find all of that over on my website. And one last thing, don't forget, in honor of the 100th episode, we are doing a special giveaway every single week for a month. This last Monday, we released a new prize for that giveaway. It is a matcha kit. So you wanna check that out. Again, that's on the homepage, simplerswellness.com, where you can sign up for the giveaway. Now, my only requirement to be eligible for the giveaway is that you leave a rating and review. Yes, I say this in nearly every show, but it's because those ratings and reviews are the lifeblood of the show. It's how iTunes shows this podcast to other people who wouldn't otherwise hear about it. So in order to help other people and the show, the health of the show, make sure that you leave an honest rating and review. Of course, if you don't have anything great to say, maybe you could just leave that off and email me personally, but all of the reviews are welcome. So thank you so much for doing that. In the meantime, let's get right to today's show, we have a very special guest on. His name is Chris DeVecchio, and he is the owner of Prevere Mind and Body. He is the founder and trainer, and he comes with the wealth of knowledge in the health field and really mixing health and fitness with the mindset. Today, we're digging into his book called The 5 by 2 Method and how you can use your senses to live a healthier life. This is so fascinating to me, and I feel like it's a good ending towards our mindset series this summer and really giving you those actionable things that you can do to help transform not only your mind, but using your mind to transform your health. So I welcome Chris DeVecchio to the show and all of his information. You're going to want to make sure and check him out at pmblife.com. And I'll have, again, all this in the show notes. But today on the show, I'm going to be asking Chris about the 5 by 2 method, what it is about our senses that really changes our actions and drives us forward and how we can get behind our senses and use them to make changes in our health. Now that might sound like gibberish right now, but stay tuned because this podcast is so thought provoking. And I know that you're going to leave with so many good tips that you can use to further your health. So let's get right to Chris. 
Welcome to the show, Chris DeVecchio. I'm so happy to have you on and talk about a subject that I really haven't dove that much into. And I think it's really fascinating, though, because I really like to take a step back and zoom out on health and look at it as a whole picture. And I think what we're going to talk about today really does that. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. So I read your book and at the beginning of the book, you have a quote and it says, stress is not what happens to us. It's a response to what happens and response is something we can choose. Right here on this podcast, we've been talking about the mindset um, and kind of the stress component, but we haven't dug in. So I kind of want to get your perspective on what do you believe about stress and is it really what our cultures made it out to be or is it something completely different? Um, Well, I think stress is is certainly, it's a real thing. So when you talk about is it what the culture has made it out to be, I think, you know, perception is is reality however reality doesn't have to be just what our minds are thinking and what what we're feeling in that moment and i think where i've really tried to you know make a difference and create an awareness around stress in itself i've been trying to help people understand that you actually have control over these feelings and emotions that all begins with our thoughts mm. um and and that turns into you know the 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 competitiveness of proactive versus reactive. Um, you know, so when it comes to stress, there's certainly things that you can do on the front end, in my opinion, to minimize the, uh, the amount of stress that you might take on. So somebody who tries to strip down and simplify their life is being proactive about how they handle or, or how they, what kind of stress or influence stress that comes into their lives mm-hmm. because they've minimized the amount of load or, or whatever's going on. Um, so as far as reactive though, you know, I, we're all human beings. And so it's normal to have a certain reaction that would make you feel a certain way. But I call it living in the quicksand. So oftentimes people, they, they get these feelings and emotions that come up from a certain situation or experience and they just buy into it and believe mm-hmm. those thoughts and end up falling into the quicksand of those, those feelings and emotions and that stress instead of actually choosing to try to take control and shift those feelings and emotions that can shift the amount of stress they're carrying. And so in the book, the five by two method, you know, it, it, I talk about how you can actually use you know, music, or you can use a smell, or you can use a, um, you can use a taste or a touch of something that can immediately shift your thought process to shift the way you feel and shift you away from the stress feeling as opposed to just allowing yourself to sit in it and buy into it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I want to get into the senses in a second, but I want to stay with stress for a second because I think the approach that you have is different than what most people probably view or or um, what do I want to say, how they are affected by stress. So if we go back, correct me if I'm wrong, you said our per- our perception is not necessarily our reality. Yep. So, okay, so like, just get into the mind for a minute and, and <clears throat> kind of explain how we can take control of our emotions and our stress. Because I think so sure. often our situation or in our, our, we let our environment control us and we think that's what's yeah. actually happening. But it's really flipped. It's the reverse reaction, technically. So can you can you go into that for a little bit? Yeah. Well, I think I mean, look, there's certainly situations that you know you can't. There's no way to avoid stress in certain situations because it's just all around us. That's just life. You know, we're human beings. We we want we tend to overload our lives and our minds and our our bodies, and so it's normal and natural for stress to be there. But I also think that there's a large portion of stress that's that's developed and created out of stories that we create in our own minds. And a lot of times those stories are based out of fear. And there's an interesting acronym that I didn't invent, but you know, it's, it's a common acronym out there around fear that fear is false evidence appearing real. Mm. And so we start to create as humans, we start to create these stories. We have these incredible imaginations. And so we start to create these stories about whatever it is that we're fearful of or afraid of. And then and then we buy into that and then it just starts to build momentum, kind of like a hurricane. But, and then it turns into a perfect storm in our minds and it all builds up. And so what I like to do or in the approach that I like to take and I encourage my clients is that when you feel stressed or you're feeling anxious, anxiety, something that's going on, 
stop for a second and start doing a fact check, mm. right? Let's go through right. the facts. Is is what I'm thinking about right now, is there any truth to any of this? Or is this all stories I'm making up, mm. right? So mm-hmm. let me give you an example. Let's say there's a couple that I, you know, I, I do a lot of couples coaching as well. And so there's been times I'm working with couples and the person's worried about infidelity and they're scared of the other person cheating on them, right? So the, the a lot of times this is, a story or, or a made up version of whatever's going on in their mind, often based on something from their own past experience. But in the situation itself, if we're doing a fact check, there's no evidence that there's any infidelity. You know, you spend the, the couple spends quite a bit of time together. So there's really no opportunity there for there to be any infidelity, you know, and, and you start to kind of work your way through that list. And it's like, really there's no truth to the fear that you're thinking that you're creating in your own mind Mm -hmm. you know so so when you start to do a fact check and back yourself out now you start to relieve some of that stress and that fear and that emotion those feelings to get away from that so the fact checking is a really big uh component to de-stressing and uh and and decompressing the mind right because like you said our subconscious and unconscious really perceives our thoughts as truth even Mm -hmm. though They're not. Okay, so if we look at this, and I feel like we live, we're a fear-based society. Is that human nature? Are we born with that or is that learned? You know, I I think that most of it is is learned, you know, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. When you look at when you look at children, they're they children are are raw and pure and just untainted with life experience. You Mm -hmm. know, I I think for myself, you know, if you look at a at a picture of a child. They just look so unaffected and so present in the moment because really that's what they are. I mean, they're not thinking about anything other than just being there. And so the camera just captures that presence and you can see it really clearly, Mm -hmm. you know, and and there's times when you can look at a, a picture of an adult and you can see pain or you can see happiness or you can see somebody who's lost or confused or, you know, and, and those ring true and clear. And I think that, you know, a lot of what happens as through our life experience is just a combination of us being conditioned through the experiences that we're having. Mm-hmm. You know, some are really happy and, and amazing and some are really sad and painful. And, you know, it, it's different for everybody. Um, but I believe that fear is, is certainly a, uh, a learned trait, you know, somebody who, you know, has never been cheated on before is not afraid of being cheated on. Mm-hmm. They're not jealous because that they've never had that experience. You know, oftentimes I find people who are afraid of certain things because they've been through an experience that has created that fear. Um, you know, even with like communication, you know, again, I, I kind of, I, I tend to go back into relationships because even with the relationships with two individuals, there's also the relate. It, it, it coincides with having just a relationship with yourself as well. But in a conversation between two, two couples, that person might be afraid to communicate with their partner because the last time they had that conversation or they decided to communicate, the partner got really angry and upset. So now they're afraid to express and communicate and talk about how their feelings because they're afraid of that reaction they might get. So mm-hmm. you look at the, you start to watch the patterns develop and those fears, you know, are, are, are inherently developed and, and, uh, kind of learned, mm-hmm. you know, um, going back again to, to children, right? I mean, I remember as a child, I had no fear of, of jumping off of anything or doing flips off of anything or a sport or trying new things. And, you know, sure enough, you, you, you have a few injuries, you break a bone, you get stitches, something happens. And now as adults, you know, you take a look at going out and surfing a 10 foot wave. You're like, no nah, way. I'm not going to touch that. I'm, I don't want to, you know, cause you, cause you know what could happen as right. a kid. You don't really know. So you just go for it. You mm-hmm. know, it's just, and then, and then you learn from your experience. I, I could get hurt. That's mm-hmm. possible. You mm-hmm. know? So I do believe that fear is really a learned uh, and developed trait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And from studying some of the, the biology of emotions, it's pretty fascinating that your emotions can change your neuropeptides, obviously, which can change every cell to be more receptive to whatever emotion you're most often having. So when we look at that, like once you get on the fear, the fear train and the negativity, it's, really easy to stay there. It's maybe even harder to be more positive. Um, but maybe survival mechanisms are kicking in too. So if we, if we want to kind of overcome this before we get into the senses and talking about that, like if we want to change our paradigm, if we want to change our unconscious and our subconscious mind, 
what are the tricks to being more positive, to being more proactive rather than reactive? Like, how, how do you believe we can change our mind? Um, proactive versus reactive in that sense. Uh, you know, again, I think that a lot of times when, when there is stress, when there is fear, a lot of those things going on, it's because there's too much going on mm. in their, in their minds and in like their chaos. lives. And so t- the, yeah, it's too much chaos happening. There's too much clutter. There's mm-hmm. too, you know, there's, t- there's too much management. So there's no opportunity for, for an individual to get a handle on what's really happening to kind of try to calm, to calm your environment, like have control of your environment, so to speak. Right. Um, but the, from a reactive state, you know, again, it's, it's really just not allowing yourself to be okay with where you're at, you know? Right. And it's, I, I think sometimes people get caught up with, you know, trying to make the shift from negative to positive or stressful to, you know, de-stressing or, you know, fear, no fear, you know, so you hear people talk about, you know, we well, just think more positively and it just sounds a little contrived, you know, like, oh, what? So I'm just supposed to have happy, positive thoughts now. And, and that's just supposed to automatically shift me. Well, I think that if you if you genuinely find something positive to think about that, you're that you're really, truly and authentically connected to, mm. then then that has the potential to do that. And I'll mm-hmm. give you a, a, my own personal example was you know, I moved out, I moved to LA 16 years ago from Boston and I came out here to pursue an acting career. And I left a, a very successful six figure job back in my mid twenties to come out here and chase the dream. And very quickly, you know, ran through my savings and I was living below the poverty line. I was chasing, I was chasing it. And it was, it was a challenge for me and I was stressed and I was afraid. And I was, you know, I was in that, like that poverty driven mindset. And I lived a block off of the ocean in a 250 square foot apartment. <laughs> so to me, it was this tiny little box, but I very quickly found a way to connect authentically to walking 10 steps down to the beach and sitting there and thinking no matter how much money I have in my pocket or no matter what I've got going on, I've got I'm rich in life, I'm rich in experience right now. I've got this. Mm-hmm. So I found a way to adapt and adjust my mindset to get into, you know, feeling that I was abundant in in other ways. I might be lacking in in monetary value, but I'm abundant in in the life and the experience and the opportunity and all the things that I have afforded me, the fact that I can live where I live and 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 so that being proactive in that sense and reactive, you know, so it, it was an initially a reactive state that I had to learn consciously mm-hmm. and it turned into, it started to develop into a proactive state because then I found myself consciously developing routines that would keep me in that positive state of mind. So I never arguably when I was at the lowest uh, of my life financially, I was at the peak of my happiness and mm-hmm. content, mm-hmm. you know? But that was that wasn't by by chance. That was by choice. Yeah. So is it fair to say that our emotions are strictly a choice? Yeah. Well, I I think given you know individuals who have you know maybe you know issues with a a, a clinical or a chemical imbalance. I mean, there's those situations in particular where you know you can't really isolate that um, and and generalize that. But I, I definitely feel that we have more control and we have more say in how we feel than we give ourselves credit. Mm. And so mm-hmm. a lot of what I do with the coaching and my, my programs is really to, to help empower people to realize how much they actually do have control and that you don't just have to go along and float along with the emotions, just keep grabbing onto whatever you're feeling and whatever you're thinking. You can you can shift that, mm-hmm. you know? And, and so I feel like most people really kind of swing like the monkey rings from one emotion to the next and just feel like whatever's going on is whatever's going on, as opposed to if they're feeling something that isn't bringing value to their life, then they can, they can choose to shift that intentionally. Mm. And that's how I came up with the concept for the book, because the mind our minds are almost too smart for us at times. We'll, we'll talk ourselves out of it or we'll have that conversation. Well, I'm not going to thinking positive is not going to help me. So I'm just not going to, you know, right. whatever. It, 
oh, I just got to have a positive thought. Now I feel better. Sure. Okay. And like immediately you go right back into your negative pattern, right? Mm -hmm. But with the five by two method and utilizing the senses on a subconscious level, you're, you're bypassing the, the intellectual side of it and allow, and going into the visceral side of it and letting yourself, letting it drive your, your emotions and your thinking through, through that process. Cause if the mind got involved, you're screwed. Right. Most times. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's so true. I'm laughing because it's so true. But, and when we talk about the senses, cause I want to get into that now, like athletes have been doing this for a long time in training and I'm sure the military and other things, like when we see people who are doing intense training, there's vis- visual visualization training and, and other kind of training that people are doing to really find greater results. So let's talk about the senses and what they can do for us. Yeah. So uh, again, you know, it, I agree with you. And I even make that comment in the book that for, for someone reading this book, I'm, I'm almost guaranteeing that the reaction is, Oh my God, I, I already do like some sort of five by two. Mm-hmm. Like I, I have certain things that, that I, that I fall back on or I lean towards because it makes me feel a certain way. Reading this book is really to take it from the unconscious mind to the conscious mind, because I believe that there's even more power like we talk about the power of it being an unconscious driven method, but once it's un- once it gets brought from the unconscious to the conscious and you're aware of what you're doing, then you can consciously start to sh- you can start to shift the conscious mind of now making choices intentionally to put this routine together or this method together on a daily basis to intentionally shift mm. how you feel. And then that from that process, it starts to give individuals the sense that oh my god i actually can control my thoughts and feelings right mm-hmm. that you have it's kind of that aha moment so you know and and this to me this came to me literally like on a whim i was like god why am i i'm, I'm always like having great days i was using the um 5 minute journal mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you're familiar with that yeah. i was using the 5 minute journal and at the end of the day it, it, uh, at the very end of the day on the journal, it asks you to write what could have made your day better. And I started to see this pattern develop where I had nothing to write. I kept writing, nothing, today was perfect. Mm. Nothing, today was perfect. And so I was trying to look through my journal and kind of reflect back on my day to see like what was, the, what was consistent in my patterns on a daily basis that – you know, allowed me to feel so complete at the end of my days. And aside from the fact that, you know, I'm a, I'm a list person, right? I make Mm -hmm. lists and I plan and I, and every day I'm always checking off that list. I'm just very adherent to that. But aside from that, I realized I had a routine in the morning and I had a routine at night. And so this routine in the morning I felt was designed to set my trajectory off to start my day off positively. And at nighttime I was setting my subconscious mind for the sleeping hours, which is not to be taken for granted because right. we do a lot of thinking and a lot of processing even in our sleep. Mm-hmm. So, so I was caught, so I was tying that loop together where at night I'm waking up feeling good. And then I, cause of the sleeping pattern that I had by driving the five by two at night in the subconscious. And then in the morning I rev it up even higher so that if it starts to fall during the day because of certain things that I'm going through or experiences I have, or, you know, whatever might happen throughout the day that could potentially bring me down, it's bringing me down from a higher point. So I'm never really bottoming out with with that type of feeling or emotion. And then at nighttime, I catch it again and bring it back up. So I'm riding on a higher frequency and keeping it up above. Not to say that there aren't dips throughout the day, but the dips, you know, don't really go that low because I'm I'm on a higher frequency consistently. Uh Um, And so to your point though, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been using these types of techniques, but not really aware that this is really a technique. I mean, everybody has music that they listen to before before a big game. You know, locker rooms have a theme song, and they have, sometimes teams have chants. Um, you know, so I, I don't know if they incorporate and use certain smells, but like, you know, ritual and like, you know... Um, you know, certain like players or athletes might use uh, a, a certain pattern to the way that they like take their take their uh, baseball bat out of the bag or their tennis racket out of the bag or you know putting like a hockey skate on. Like I always put my left skate on first before I put my right skate on. You know, I I put the tape on my pads a certain way. It's like everybody's got certain routines and rituals, and this has been going on for a long, long time. I feel like taking this technique 
and reading and really understanding and incorporating this technique just heightens that even more. It takes it. It's like next level thinking and next level process of that already, uh, already developed routine. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about these like rituals that people do, which they do all the time, I mean, a lot of people think it's like their quote unquote lucky charms or whatever, but it's really not that at all. It's really them tapping into their mind to set themselves up for success. Totally agree. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure if the people who are doing it are even aware of what it's doing for them other than in their minds. They're just thinking like, this is what I, it's never failed me. Whenever I tap my, whenever I bounce the basketball at a free throw line, if I bounce it twice every single time, it, there's something about it that I just, I never miss. right? Right. And in their minds, they're thinking it's the basketball, but what if it was, what if it was the sound of Mm. the ball that hits the court? And like that, that sound and how it like vibrates through their body that kind of balances them out and gives them that feeling of being centered that helps them hit that shot every single mm-hmm. time. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So not so much the fact that they're bouncing the ball and it's just lucky. And if I, oh God, I missed a shot because I didn't bounce it twice. It's like there could be some connectivity to the sound of it or smelling the ball, like smelling mm-hmm. the leather. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, or, or if the way you feel and touch the ball and feel the seams mm-hmm. of the basketball on your fingers, you know, it's like. There, there, I think there's more to it that even people who are already doing it aren't really aware of. And so, again, the, this book just takes it to the next level because people who are already doing these routines can then go back and analyze all of these rituals and go, oh, my God, that's why I do it. I didn't, I didn't right. even realize that that's mm-hmm. why I'm doing it. Like, mm-hmm. like I, you know, in a, in a more like layman's perspective. You know, it's funny, I'll, I'll sit around like a Starbucks or a coffee shop and I watch people come in and out and you see the same people come in and out at the same time. And, right. you know, you could very easily write that off as they just love coming in, taking their break and getting their coffee. But mm-hmm. is it something about the environment that when they crack the threshold of walking into that coffee shop, the smell, mm-hmm. the sound of the music that's played, the ambient music that's playing, mm-hmm. the, the dark, the dark wood, natural, you know, reclaim wood decor, right. you know, is it, mm-hmm. is it the sounds of the coffee machine? You know, is it the, the touch and the feel of like the chair that they sit in? Mm-hmm. Is it the, the, the taste of the coffee itself? Is it that entire experience that they're really heightened and like, no matter how crazy their day was, they just lost a huge deal. Just leaving the office and stepping out and having that moment that's firing all five senses that they don't even understand really is what's really going on is really shifting them in that moment. So if you can connect to that and realize this shifts me immediately, then you can start to pull from some of those, those, uh, those acknowledgements and some of those senses and take that back into the office. And imagine if you lost a deal at the desk, but you didn't didn't have a chance to go to the coffee shop, but instead you can tap into a couple of those senses that, that, you know, for sure shift you in a moment Mm -hmm. and then apply that so that you don't sit in the office for the next two or three hours, allowing yourself to sit in the quicksand of those negative emotions and feelings. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think this is super powerful because I would guess it's my guess that most people don't even connect their senses to anything but just being there, you know, maybe we take them for granted. <laughs> like we don't realize the power and the influence that it's actually having on our mind. But I think you're so right. Like even in, when we look at this, the scope of health and we see people who are comfort eating, I'm like, you know, sometimes I don't really even believe that you like the food that you're eating. You just like the experience of it. Like whether it's the texture or the taste or it takes you back to <clears throat> positive thoughts or at some point it did help you cope because at the end of the day, I really believe that we don't change based off goals. We don't change based off habits. We change based on the emotion and how it makes us feel. Um, yeah. And so if we if we take this, though, so many people are doing habits or rituals that are also really harmful to the body. So how do you take someone and use these senses, like to awaken their senses or make them aware of them and use it for the, po- for the positive spin rather than the negative? Well, again, I think it's just a matter of, you know, having a, having a concept like this put in front of you makes you, um, it, it creates an opportunity for you to do an audit of your life. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and take a look and take a look at what's actually going on, you know, and you, and you can think about like, wow, my taste is I smoke cigarettes mm. and mm-hmm. that smell of the cigarettes. Right. And go, wow, that's not, that's not bringing value to my life, mm-hmm. you know? So 
Um, so I feel like it, it kind of awakens you because we talk a lot about in this book about how the, the five senses using it as a positive feedback loop, not a negative feedback. Right. Loop. So, so it's not just to awaken people to start doing something if you're not doing something, but it's also to awaken people in the same way if they're doing things that aren't bringing value to them, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, cause so it it's, creates, cause it's not, always, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Cause, well, cause it's, cause it's not always about addition. Sometimes it's about subtraction, uh, right? Uh huh. And, and I, and I apply that to my, to my, you know, clients that I work with, you know, when I'm working with a, a client of mine, you know, throughout our, our 90 day program, you know, we're constantly making adjustments and changes to their program, whether it's nutrition, whether it's supplementation, whether it's lifestyle, you know, so, and that's, a, and it's not always about just adding things into their program, giving them another supplement, adding more food to their program, you know, giving them more things to do. So oftentimes People are working out with me less and eating more because a lot of times they're overtraining and they're pushing themselves mm. too hard counterintuitively to what they think they need to be doing to get the results they want. So someone who feels like, you know, the, the best way I'm going to get in shape is just constantly pounding my workouts is going to the gym seven days a week, doing two hours of cardio and they're cutting back on their food. They're not eating calories. So in that process, they're shutting down their metabolism because they're not eating and they're increasing cortisol levels because they're overtraining. And so in that, in that, in that type of scenario, I'm subtracting the amount of workouts and I'm adding more food, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, and 99% of the time people are getting very, very quick results and transformations by doing the complete opposite reverse of whatever it is they've been doing. So <laughs> the same thing with the five by two method is that, you know, it'll certainly make you aware of things you're not doing, but it'll also make you aware of things that you are doing mm. and, and, and kind of force you, like I said, to do an audit, you know, take a look at what's going on, where, where are you, what's bringing value, what's not bringing value. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I just love this because I mean, we can have a hundred million different recommendations, which there probably are that many recommendations about what we should be doing. And too often we listen to the thing on the magazine or what our friend found success in rather than just listening to our body. And essentially with, when we connect our senses to everything, it makes you aware of that. Like it makes you aware of what your body's saying rather than just looking for what you think is going to be, yeah. again, just the perception versus reality situation that's going on. Okay. So can right. you, no. yeah, go Do you have something to say about that? I was just going to echo on that thought real quick. You know, one of the things that I, again, I talk about from my own experience in the book and, and, and it's really can also help highlight, um, some areas in people's lives by, by thinking about the experience is that, you know, my five by two in the morning, the smell version for me is, is my coffee beans, right? I grind my Mm -hmm. coffee beans and I inhale the beans before I pour them in the machine and, and start the, start the coffee machine. But I used to so quickly just grind the beans, throw them in and then run on through my morning, set the machine, come back to the coffee machine, grab the pot of coffee, just start drinking it. And so I started to look at other, I'm like, where else in my life am I just running over details? Right. And and it's not, you know, literally like not stopping to smell the roses, you know, like see how fast we just run through life and don't ever take moments to stop and just think about where we are. And how mm-hmm. lucky we are and how grateful we are. Or, you know, we just, I feel like there's so much missed because we're just, uh, and, and now with technology, everything is just so fast and immediate. Everybody wants it. It's all real time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, taking moments to sit down and reflect and think and really, you know, um, let things kind of absorb and, and permeate through your body. You know, it's, it's a real eye opener when you start to think about that because that's something that I've gotten a lot of feedback from people who have read the book saying, "Wow, I didn't, I didn't realize how you know now like when my 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 plate of food hits the table, I actually like smell my food before I just start diving in and eating it, <laughs> right? You know, and it and it and it does something. You know, a mm-hmm. chef would tell you that you know you eat with your eyes and your nose before mm-hmm. you eat with your mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, so just another another uh, interesting you know fact that kind yeah. of ties in that we're talking about. No, it's it's so fascinating and and I agree. It just makes you more aware of everything and slows down enough to see it because instant gratification is really a fleeting thing. I mean, we can chase all day long, but the chase never ends. So you might as well just enjoy what you have right here. Okay, but I want to get into the 5 by 2 method. Can you quickly and briefly, I know this is in your book and I really encourage people to check that out because it is really fascinating. But can you just kind of briefly tell us what the 5 by 2 method is? Sure. So the five by two method is a technique that I developed 
that teaches you to tap into your five senses consciously first thing in the morning to create a, uh, to set you off on a positive trajectory in the morning and last thing you do before you go to sleep at night. And so again, I'll use myself as an example. The first thing I do in the morning is when I wake up and roll out of bed, I put on my slippers. That satisfies my touch. Mm -hmm. I then go downstairs, I grind my coffee beans and smell the beans before I pour them into the coffee machine. That satisfies the smell. I then set the coffee machine off and I go on and start listening to the podcast that I tune into every morning. I then flip through the Daily Ohm, which is a, a website that I subscribe to to get my, my positive affirmation quotes. And then I go back and grab my cup of coffee. And so within the first 20 minutes, I've knocked out my five by two. And it's a system that easily integrates into my morning routine. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm initially, you know, it was something that was um, kind of fabricated. I mean, I had to think about what it is. I actually, things that I like to smell that create a positive feedback loop, things I like to listen to, see, taste, touch, all that. But then the idea of the five by two is to figure out how to weave it into your daily habits. So it doesn't feel like something abrupt that you're trying to force and fit into your, your schedule Right at nighttime. This, we're doing the same thing at nighttime as far as tapping into your five senses to help set your subconscious during your sleeping hours. So at night, I'll come home and I'll light a stick of incense. Um, sometimes I'll take an Epsom salt bath. Um, I'll put my slippers back on. I've got a certain uh, ra uh, Spotify radio station that I like to listen to, this ambient music that helps calm me down after a crazy day. And then oftentimes I have a tea that, that I drink at night um, that, that satisfies my taste. And I'll sometimes read a few pages of a book, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it is, if I can get through it, because I usually fall asleep within the first 10 seconds of my head hitting the pillow. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so again, it's uh, the, the tail end, the bookends of the five by two first thing in the morning and the five by two at the end of your day mm -hmm. is to create that positive feedback loop through sleeping hours so that you wake up on a higher frequency and then you continue to take it up on a high frequency from the morning time throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And it, like you said, it's so simple. It's how can you not do it, you know? So if someone's starting out, what are like the first three things that you would tell them to get started doing right away? I mean, you kind of laid it out there. And I don't know if that's what you would say to them is do the morning and night routine. Or what other things would you add to that? Like the first three things. The, the first thing I would recommend as far as like the scent, what kind of sensory work or just how to how to kick off trying to incorporate this as your routine? Um, either or. Yeah, I think the, one of the first things I like to recommend people doing is just first start by observing your day, mm -hmm. right? Really try to get conscious and present and observe your day because you may already be doing a version of the five by two that works really, really well for you and, and isn't creating any type of interruption. And you might enjoy those things. And by just bringing it to your consciousness and awareness, it's going to, it's, it's going to satisfy everything that needs to be satisfied through this process. Um, so just for the first few days, just kind of observing your day and seeing things that you go to for taste, touch, smell, see, and hear, um, and, and pay attention and make some notes. Um, and then there's a, you know, there's a workbook section inside the five by two book that gives you a place to kind of store some of that information so that you can then go back and play around with developing lists that, that you can pull from. So you might want to try in the morning using, you know, wearing your slippers, but maybe it's, maybe instead of the slippers, it's like, it doesn't really do that for you. So instead it's a t-shirt that you like that mm -hmm. feels good on your skin, or mm -hmm. maybe it's a certain lotion that you like to put on every morning that that becomes part of your touch, you know? Um, but just kind of playing around with it. So developing lists in each category is, is part is, is, you know, number two in terms of how to approach this and then making those lists so that you have access to be able to pull from different lists and create different lists to see what five by two actually works well for you. And you can always kind of interchange it and go back and forth with it. Um, and then number three is just play around and have fun. There's really no way that you, you, you can't do it wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't screw it up. You know, that's the beauty of all of this. If there's no all or none approach, it's it's just learning about yourself, really. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say like if somebody's resistant to doing that, to doing this or trying this, then then that's something for you to observe and, and kind of explore. Just the fact that you're resistant to it because it's something that's so easy. And I also feel like just tapping into this process and the method is also, um, you know, 
developing a level of gratitude for the fact that you have all five of your senses. How about that? Mm -hmm. How about the fact that you have all five of your senses and you're choosing to not utilize them in a way that could really empower you and enrich your, your, your experience in life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, somebody, I I even kind of mentioned this in the book, you know, somebody who was unfortunate to, to lose their vision might wish that they had spent more time looking deep into the eyes of their, their partner or spending more time driving down to the beach when they lived a mile away from it and looking at the ocean or, you know, just oftentimes, you know, as human beings, we're just so reactive and, you know, we don't realize what we have until we lose it. And so just taking that type of approach, this type of approach, I think just brings it up a notch in terms of uh, levels of gratitude for natural gifts that we're given that we can use in, in a way that can really shift us. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So good. This has been so insightful. I have really enjoyed it and I learned a lot. Um, before we get into where people can learn more about you and like really invest in this, because I think it's really worth it. And some of these mindset things are just so easy that they're easy to overlook. Um, and so really putting your focus into this. But before we get there, I have a few quick fire questions for you. What's yeah. the first thing you do every morning for your health? Don't look at my cell phone. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Which is harder to do than you would think, right? right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's that goes back to the whole subtraction addition. It's not necessarily adding something. It's taking something mm, out. Mm-hmm. You know, that, 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 that's at, that's bringing value. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to do, especially, you know, I've got a lot of clients that I take care of and manage all around the world in different time zones. And so, you know, I I always feel inclined to want to get on my phone and start texting and and checking emails. And I used to do that. I was, I had a really bad habit of that, but I realized that it, uh, it it really held me back from being able to get myself in the right place that I need to be to start my day. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a real conscious choice to, um, of, of, of self-care. Yeah, I like it. What Outside of your own book, what's your favorite health book? Man, I'm, I'm really diving in right now into uh, Aubrey Marcus's Own It, Own the Day, Own Your yeah, Life. Yeah, I haven't personally read it, but I've heard good things about it. Yeah, it's really interesting. I, I feel that he and I come from a lot of the same school of thoughts and methodologies and uh, – you know, he, he's, he's doing a great job at getting his message out and his, he, I'm really, really drawn to that book so far. So I don't have, uh, a full report on that. We can pick that up on another podcast, but, uh, but so far that's, that's in the top of my list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Okay. What's one food you couldn't live without? Pizza. Yeah. (laughs) I'm with you on that one. (laughs) I make the best homemade pizza. So I, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a staple in the, in the weekly or bi-weekly routine. Yeah. I like it. Uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, I would say I, I didn't, I didn't get it directly, but it's something that I remember seeing on an Oprah Winfrey show one day. And she talked about how she has a sign on the front of her house that says, be aware of the energy you bring into the room. Mm. And it was intended because I think as, you know, we go through our lives and we all experience, you know, hard times at one given point, we don't often think about how we're impacting somebody else's life and what what kind of energy we're bringing Mm. uh, and how powerful that can actually be. And, you know, paying attention to that, you know, and, and being aware of what kind of energy you're bringing into somebody's house, somebody's business, somebody's life, um, I, I think is really, really important. You know, if, if, if I'm having a hard day and, you know, there's a big celebration and I'm just having a hard time not being able to get through whatever I'm dealing with, I might want to reconsider showing up to that event if I can't bring myself to get, get it together. Cause I don't want to bring that energy into the, you know, into the group of people Mm -hmm. who are all there to celebrate and are positive. So, you know, that's a more extreme example, but I think just in general, you know, always just being aware of the energy you're bringing into the room or around the people that you're with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It can change everything, not just for yourself, but for the other person too. And being mindful of other people. Mm -hmm. And last question kind of goes along with the, the one I just asked, but what's the best piece of advice you could leave us with? Really get to know yourself on a high level. You know, I feel like a lot of us kind of go through life never really knowing who we are. Um, and, you know, I found that I've, I've been on a personal journey. I can literally remember the moment that, that I went, that I had this enlightened awakening and I was, I was 18 years old. 
Uh, I'm 42 now. And so this has been a long journey for me, lots of ups and downs. And I've just, you know, I've always just been so deeply committed to wanting to get to know myself and understand myself and always improve. Um, not to say that I haven't had many setbacks and, and, and times when I've fallen hard, but I learned a lot from those, from those failures and, and upsets. Um, but really having gotten to know myself and been committed to that level of developing that level of self-awareness is what's gotten me to the place of, of feeling really secure and confident uh, of, of who I am and where I am. And in a sense that I, I feel you know, compelled to want to try to support and encourage and empower other people to do the same. You know, Mm -hmm. when I coach people, I always come from a very low level of, I'm not telling you that what I say is right or wrong or the end all be all. And then what you're doing is right or wrong. All I'm here to do is just provide you with some different, you know, perspectives and ideas and thoughts of ways you may not be seeing or doing things to create new possibilities for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that comes from the level of confidence from really having spent many, many years digging into myself. And so I think it just does something to you. It shifts you in a, in, as an individual. It shifts your life experience to have that level of confidence, not cockiness, you know, but just confidence that of who you are and what you're capable of handling so that as you go through life and come across adversity, Mm-hmm. That you can manage your way through it because you have control of your your feelings and emotions and know exactly who you are and what you're capable of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so good. Thank you so much for being on and sharing all of the information you have. I know it's going to be so impactful for my own life and so many other people's. So can you tell us where we can learn more about you and get a hold of the 5x2 method? Absolutely. So the, uh, the 5x2 method lives on Amazon. Um, But we also have a direct link uh, to Amazon through my website, which is www.p as in Peter, M as in Mary, B as in boy, life.com. PMB stands for Premier Mind and Body. So it's pmblife.com. Um, and also on, we put a lot of content up on social media through Instagram and Facebook. Um, Instagram is my name, Chris DeVecchio, uh, as well as on Facebook, but we, we share quite a bit of content between, uh, nutrition, Mm -hmm. exercise and training, supplementation, lifestyle, um, food hacks, workout hacks, just lifestyle hacks in general. So, you know, my, our, our, our approach to health and wellness, um, is, is holistic in, in every sense of the word, you know, it's not just about working out right. and, 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 and dieting. So, um, there's a lot of information that lives on that. And so on Instagram is, is a, is a great place to visit and, and, uh, and get a lot of that information for free. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I'll make sure and link all of this up in the show notes as well as the link to the book, the five by two method. Thank you so much for being on. And again, sharing this information with us and the world. Yeah, Alexa, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. I told you, super thought-provoking, and I just loved how he gave so many actionable steps that you can take and start to implement into your own life. So in honor of this, in honor of helping you to uncover your senses and start to build those routines, over in the show notes, I'm going to be leaving some special handouts, one on the morning routine that I've already created, and one new one to help you uncover your five senses. So you're going to want to head on over there at simperitswellness.com backslash 104 to get both of those handouts so you can really start to implement this into your life. I'm also going to be showing you my routine and how I started transitioning my life from this show and how big of an impact it's already had. So make sure you head to the show notes to learn more about that and sign up for my email list to get more insight on The Simple Cleanse, which is coming out so soon. Don't forget to check out Chris DeVecchio and all of his information at his website, Premier Mind and Body at pmblife.com. Grab his book because it really does go in more in depth in today's topic. In the meantime, don't forget to head back on Friday for another special episode of your most embarrassing questions answered. And don't forget, we only have one more week in this mindset series, and we are really wrapping things up. But that's not to say that there's going to be a lot more mindset information interspersed into the coming episodes this fall, but we have so much goodness coming your way. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Simple Roots Radio. I will see you back here on Friday.